The biggest objective of the geostationary mission is actually to be able to do an observation of high impact weather, weather that is changing rapidly. We cannot do that with an instrument which flies over today and then flies over the next time eight hours from now. So we have to have something which is, which is monitoring continuously. Day in, day out, we provide our data. It gets used by weather services and it's used to help people stay safe. All the data that goes into the, the weather forecast models so that they can then project it forward in time. A lot of what we do in, in supporting weather forecasting supports action. So the value from our data comes when somebody far down the, the line does something or makes a decision and takes an action. The more different types of satellites that we have available, the more we can get different slices and different views of the atmosphere, and they're all very highly complementary, that they add to this, this global picture of what, the global picture that we need to know for weather forecasting. But how that turns into accuracy in forecasting and warning, we're gonna to have to find out by experience. Today we have a single satellite system with one instrument. In the future we will have three satellites providing data. We have the imaging satellite with an imager of 16 channels, higher temporal resolution, one image every 10 minutes now, and we also have a significantly higher spatial resolution. So we go from three kilometers to one kilometer or even 500 meters depending on the channel. And then we have another satellite which has a sounder, an infrared sounder and the UV this sounder. Then we have the lightning imager, which is actually, in European context, a completely new innovation and will allow us for the first time to monitor in a continuous and uniform way the lightning over the full disk area covering Europe and Africa and the surrounding sea areas. These together are actually very much more than we had currently. So this is a really, really quite significant step where the data volume will be 50 times more than today. Well, we expect MTG uh, both the sound emission and the image emission to deliver data at a rate that we've never seen before. But also, particularly in terms of the sounder, we're going to get spectral resolution. That is the ability to distinguish different frequencies, which gives us a three-dimensional picture of the atmosphere. I think in terms of the, the, the imagery that we're going to get from MTG, uh, it, it's very exciting because as you get the newer technology coming along, you get better resolution imagery, so high, higher, more focused satellite images, if you like, which the forecasters love. They can see exactly where the clouds are, where, where the volcanic ash is, or where the desert dust is, where the precipitation is. And the, the better picture they've got at a, at a more local uh, scale. I think that the next generation satellite data will bring more exciting uh, information uh, due to the higher resolution imagery. What excites us is the new information we will get with this data. It's not only the data itself, but it will provide more information that we have now. And that's really exciting. And, and we are looking forward to try to use that data in scientific and in an operational context and help uh, the forecasters to use uh, those data and those information to get better forecasts. I mean, the, the lightning activity is, is uh, well correlated with thunderstorms. If we have that data about the lightning activity, we will characterize and identify better the thunderstorms, and this will be in the benefit of the weather forecast. Looking especially at thunderstorms, we use it for climate studies, whether there's more or less thunderstorms in different parts of the world compared to in the past, uh, and I also work closely with the aviation industry. You don't want planes flying into storms, uh, so a lot of my research is involved in, in how we can uh, provide information to pilots so they can avoid storms. We were working with the user community for the past years in the user preparation projects to make them aware of the data but also to learn how to use the data even before it's available. They need to know what they can expect from the new data and how to yeah, exploit the, the capabilities of the satellite. The step up is massive, the data volume is massive. We went for the bells and whistles and, and I think this was the right decision because when you do a big investment like this, you have to take a little bit of risk as well, because you can only do this once.